This is the first in a series of tutorials that will show you how to start writing your own scripts using AutoHotKey. First, what you'll need and where you'll find it. What you're going to look for is AutoHotKey and you're going to go, you can search it up on Google and find their page. Right, here it is right here. But uh, I'll show you what to look for on this. Um, <clears throat> it's all one word. You find autohotkey.com and you just click on that, bring you to this page, download it, install it, and it goes to your program files if I'm not mistaken. So that's that. How do you start using it? In order to use the script software, what you need to do is just pull out a, a blank notepad and then go to save as <clears throat> name it and at the end instead of the dot txt that you'd normally have change it to dot ahk and that's it save your changes and that's it um, what I like to do with my scripts is I like to paste them onto my desktop and what you'll notice rather than the normal image that you'd have for a uh, a blank for a notepad it'll look similar it'll just be a page but instead of having the lines on it or whatever it'll have a red H and then you can just right click on it and run it from there it's the simplest way to use it okay next making notes and commenting out code <clears throat> right now this is a executable program and in order right now if I was to try running this it's gonna it would give me an error because it doesn't it's gonna come to this first line and it's not gonna know what that is it doesn't know it doesn't mean anything to it so it, it's gonna give you an error so I already have it pasted to the side so we'll check that and there you go error at line 4 line tells you what the line is it tells you what the error is so it says this is not a recognized action so to fix that problem wherever I want to have notes or block out certain sections of code that I, because I want to test something else all I have to do is put a semicolon before any line that I don't want to get read so just go through all of this and add semicolon so now it shouldn't give us any errors so if I run the script again because there's no actual executable program it should just do nothing which it did also if I do have a bit of code and what I can do is beside it I can have this is blah okay so I can also do comments like that <clears throat> the bread and butter for most people is just sending mouse clicks so we'll go over that now um, normally I break up my code into different sections so we're gonna have an area down here that we're gonna call the main script and so that way if this script is really really long I can find this area really quickly by highlighting it in that way. And the first thing we'll do is just show you how to move your cursor. So you can't see my cursor with this recording software, but you can see me scrolling across there. So what this first command is going to do, it's just going to move your cursor. It's not going to do any clicks or anything like that. It's just going to move your cursor from wherever it is to wherever you want it to go. And the code for that or the command for that is mouse move and then a comma and then X comma Y but you replace the X with a coordinates and the Y with a coordinates now if you have a specific spot that you want your mouse to move to you can either run this see where it goes and then make adjustments as you see fit or you can go to where you have your program and find the spy tool 
double click on that and it'll give you this active window information and if you look here this line right here the default it tells me my the mouse location so all I have to do is click on wherever I want it to go move my mouse there and remember that number so <clears throat> let's say it's this spot here 96 by 482 Okay, so now when it runs this, it'll move my cursor from wherever it is to that location. Next, we have click. So let's say we don't just want to move our, our cursor there, but we also want to click that spot as well. So the command for that is click, comma. Once again, we have an X and a Y. So let's use the same X and Y location again. Okay. Oops, I made a mistake. Unlike the mouse move where you have a comma after the X, in the click command, there is no comma after the command, the X command. Okay, so just remember that the difference between the two of them. Here you have a comma, here you don't. Next, let's go to the next thing, which is sending automated keystrokes. Okay, so this is, let's say you're, using, you're trying to write a script for a game, for example, that has you press the letter T to open up a win window, or press the number one to activate this, or something like that. So if you're writing a script to do it automatically, you're going to want to send that command. So to do that, you just type send, comma, and then whatever you want to send. So if I want to send a D, I just send a D. If I want to send a G, I just send a D, G. But for this, what we're going to do is we're going to actually have to send a sentence. So we'll say, is your... How about that? That looks good to me. So when it gets to this line, it's going to send this and type it out on our page. So that's sending automated keystrokes. Next is setting up delays. Now we don't always want things to happen instantaneously. So what we can do is we can set up a, a time delay. So that way it'll wait a little while before it does the next action. And the command to do that is just sleep and then the length of time. And the length of time is 1,000 for every second. So 10,000 is 10 seconds. 100,000 is 100 seconds. So we'll get it to wait 2 seconds, which is 2,000. So when the script starts running, it's going to come here. It's going to start. And it's going to come here and it's going to wait two seconds before it does the next action. And that will allow me to take my hand off the mouse so that way I don't mess it up. Next, it's going to move the mouse to that location. And then we're going to get it to wait again. We'll get it to wait a th one second. <clears throat> Next, it's going to click on that location and then we'll get it to wait again. And then it, last, it's, Lee, it's going to print out that sentence. Okay, so there's how you set up a delay. Okay, next is setting up binded keys and setting up a way to pause or exit the application or script. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is right up at the right under this part here. So right in the beginning of our main script, we're going to say we're going to tell the compiler what the state of pause is going to be. So to begin with, pause is going to be off, but we could have pause on to begin with as well. So when the script starts running, pause is not going to be turned on. So it's going to start running normally right from the beginning. But there could be reasons why you would want to have it paused to begin with. So in order to do that, this is how you do it. You just type pause, 
on or off. Next, we're going to bind pause to a key. So we're going to, I like to use the letter Z, and then it's colon, colon, and then tell it what it's going to be doing. So the letter Z is going to do the pause. And that's it. So wherever, if it's running the script, if I want it to pause, I just type Z and it'll pause. If for some reason I have a habit of uh, typing a key that I don't want to type because let's say I'm Googling something while I'm running a script, well, I don't want to have a problem with the script because I'm typing a key that's attached, that's bound to the script. Because right now, if I'm running the script and I try to type the letter Z, it's not actually going to type it. It's just going to pause it because it's that's bound to that. It's not actually bound to sending that character. So if you have problems with it where you want it to, you want to bind a key, but you don't want, you need to still be able to use certain keys for normal operation of your keyboard. What you can do is press the the shift of six so the up arrow before the letter and what that means is I have to hold control with Z in order for it to pause next we need to have we're gonna set up a key to exit so once again we're gonna pick I'm gonna pick X to exit why not and then we're gonna say that is exit app once again, I don't want to accidentally press X while I'm doing other things, so I will make it Control X. And if you're wondering, plus X is for Shift, but it's probably better just to use Control. Now, with an easy script like this, where it's just a sequence of events, it's going to eventually get to the end, and there's not going to be anything else that it can do. So why do I want to have it that I have to manually exit the app so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it set up so that it does it on its own so once it gets to the very end of the script it's gonna exit on its own and all I have to do there is just exit app and that's it so now it, as it's running along if it gets to say here and I want it to exit I can manually exit or I can let it go all the way to the end and it'll exit on its own Okay, that's it for that. Last but not least, running our script. So what I'll do is give some space so that way we're, when, it's, when it types out that sentence, it'll have a place to go. We'll save our changes. On my desktop, I have the script already pasted, and I will just run script. And it'll wait a second while it's doing the first parts, and then it'll type it out. And there you go. That's the first tutorial. See you on the next one.